extreme Bible study of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. Thank you for tuning in this evening as we come together to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Bible tells us that we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we come in on Wednesday evenings to hear what thus saith the Lord. And so we invite you in to our sanctuary this evening to join us in worship as we praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to get our service started and our praise leader is coming to give us our opening selection. Would you all receive Minister Winston Pearson with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. The song is, This is the Day That the Lord Has Made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad it is, and be glad. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad it is this is the day this is the day that the lord has made i will enter his court with thanksgiving in my heart i will courts with praise his courts with praise i will say that it's the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. One more time. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. All right, shall we pray? Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we thank you for this day. Certainly this is the day you have made, and we shall rejoice. We shall be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come into the house that is called by your name, to lift our voices, and to make known our request and our petition to the God that hears and answers prayer. We thank you, Father that your ears are open and attentive. You listen to the cries of the righteous. We thank you, Father, that you not only listen to them, but that you honor and you answer them. And so, Father, as we come in this evening, we ask for your presence to be here among us. We pray that you would manifest your glory here in our midst. Let the Spirit of God have the right of way in this place. Sit on each of us as you did on the day of Pentecost as cloven tongues of fire. Help us to be under the total control of the Spirit of God. Don't let us grieve you, Father, but let us be controlled and submissive to the will of God. You said that if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, that you would direct our paths. And so, Father, we thank you this evening. We acknowledge you and we acknowledge your word. We understand that you are the vine. We are just branches and there's nothing that we can do without you. And so work the will and work the do in us. Sit on each of us, Father. Touch every heart and every mind and every spirit. Let everything be subject to the word of the Lord. Let your anointing fill this house. Let your power be felt. We pray, O oh God, for the people of the Gaza Strip. We pray, O oh Father, that you would spare the innocent. Stretch out your mighty hand. Be the power that is overreaching, overpowering in that area and bring peace to them. Remember, Father, 
the people of Ukraine that are suffering in a war-torn nation at this time. We pray that your hand would be upon them. Remember the people of Japan that just had such an, a, a gigantic earthquake. We pray for your grace, Lord, to intercede for people that haven't been found yet. Comfort those families in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, this evening, let your name be glorified. Help us to surrender everything to you, and your will be done. We do pray, O oh God, that you would anoint your word. Let your word go into the good ground of every heart. Let it produce fruit, much fruit, durable fruit, and let that fruit remain. And so, Father, we thank you for it now. We ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ and the Lord's people say it. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Come on, clap your hands right there. How many thank the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. If you know it, sing it with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. want to thank you Lord come on lift your voice and let's sing that again thank you Lord thank you Lord thank want to thank you Lord why because you've been so good you've been so good you've been so so, so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. One more time. Thank you, Lord, from your heart. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank Thank you, you Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank, thank you. I just want to thank. Thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands right there. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I thank the Lord for all he's done for me. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord at this time. Uh, we are calling for our announcements. Would you all receive uh, Sister Natasha Hilliard with a hearty amen. amen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the viewers at home, we would like to welcome you to the Abundant Love Church Wednesday night Bible study. We certainly thank you for tuning in for this evening. Please post any questions, comments, or any special prayer requests that you may have. Uh, this coming week, we will be exploring the first book of Corinthians, and we're going to uh, explore through or divide chapter number 13. So to receive an outside, 
outline to follow along during Bible study, all you have to do is comment with your email address below, or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com, or you can now go to our new website, which is AbundantLove-Church.org. The Abundant Love Fellowship Dinner and Award Ceremony, the date has been changed. It changed from January 7th to February the 18th. We will keep you updated with any additional information within the for, uh, forthcoming month. On January 8th, which is Monday, I believe, we will start our 21-day consecration. We will be giving an outline with weekly instructions for this particular fast. For those of you at home, you can certainly uh, join in as well. Again, if you're not on our email list, all you have to do is comment with your email address below, or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com. Sister Marilyn Spann has tickets for free admission to the Roller Dome North for the dates of uh, now through January the 8th. Um, the times are from 12 to 4 p.m. You will be responsible for skate rental of $3. So if you're interested in getting the kids out uh, during the rest of this break, go ahead and see Sister Marilyn Spann. contributions. We certainly thank everyone that has contributed to Abundant Love Ministries, and if you have not given to our ministry, you are able to do so at well, as well. You can give through Cash App. Our cash tag is Abundant Love at Front... I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me start that over. So our cash tag, cash app, cash tag is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. Or you can give mobily through Givelify. Our name is Abundant Love Church. And just make sure that says in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We certainly welcome you to join our regular worship. If you are in the Fort Wayne area, our address is 2615 New Haven Avenue. And our service times are on Sundays. We have Sunday school panel at 9 a.m. Sunday school class in the sanctuary at 9.50 a.m., followed by our morning worship at 10.45 a.m. On Mondays, we have corporate prayer at 6.30 p.m., and we also have a short video clip called Motivating Moments on Facebook as well as uh, our YouTube channel just to get your week started off right. On Wednesdays, we have intercessory prayer at 6 p.m., followed by our Disciples Academy Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Now, if you miss any of the live streams, all of these are archived for you. You can certainly find those on um, our Facebook page, Abundant Love Church, or you can find those on our YouTube channel, Capital A, Capital L Ministries. These are all of our announcements now in the hands of our praise leader. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Because he's a great God on tonight. Hallelujah. We can't take it for granted. Hallelujah. The air that we breathe, our mobility, our faculties, the I mean, everything that God has done for us, it is good. We are yet in the land of the living. We have food, clothing, and shelter. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. And I've decided to give him greater praise than I did last year because he's been just that good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I had a song, and it, and it went west. So we're just going to think. <laughs> you know how sometimes you get up and your song sits down. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to do my favorite, breathe in, breathe out. Hallelujah. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, he gave me the air to breathe. And I'm grateful for it. How about you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and stand to your feet. Sing that with me. Breathe in, breathe out. 
Feel the warmness of his touch. Breathe in, breathe out. Know he loves you so much. When Christ is on the inside, he is all you ever need. If you want to feel his presence, just breathe. Come on and sing that with me. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe out. Feel the warmness. Feel, Feel the warmness of his touch. Oh, breathe in. Breathe out. Know he loves you so much. When Christ, when Christ is on the inside, he is all you ever need. If you want to feel his presence, just breathe. Hallelujah. Let it breathe. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. to feel his presence if you want to feel his presence just breathe just breathe oh, oh. Let, let it, it breathe, breathe on me let it breathe on me let the breath let the breath of the lord to feel his presence if you want to feel his presence if you want to feel his presence if you want to feel oh, his presence if you want to feel 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 if you want to feel his presence I want to feel his presence if you want to feel Inside. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. If you want to I feel his presence, if you want to feel his presence, oh, if you want to feel his presence, I want to feel his presence. If you want to feel his presence, yeah. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. A great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Come on, Praise lift your hands. Name. Lift your hands. Amen. And let's just feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Glory to God. How many love to feel the presence of the Lord? I hold that if you live so that you can't feel the presence of God, you live beneath your privilege. Amen. And I know it's not at all an emotion, and I know it's not all in a feeling, 
Amen. But I do believe it is uh, it is a very it, it's not really the kind of feeling you can describe. You just have to feel the presence of the Lord to know what it's like. It's kind of like uh, when people tried to, back in the day when they tried to explain the baptism of the Holy Ghost, finally they just came to the conclusion that we can't describe it. You have to experience it for yourself. Amen. All right. God bless you. We are here this evening. Happy to have you all here this evening. Amen. You should have received in your email uh, the copy of the outline for the next two chapters we have chapters 13 and 14 of 1 Corinthians we sent out earlier this week and so this evening we are going to start on chapter 13 not really sure how far we will get in there but we will start uh, certainly prayers go out to Sister Vera Drew uh, who's not able to be with us this evening to read for us but uh, God has a ram in the bush. Amen. So Amen. Sister Monique Gillespie's here. She's going to be our reader this evening. And I'd like to say to you, if you do not have a copy of the outline for this evening, it is very easy for you to get one. Uh, you can do a number of things, three to be exact. Um, if you uh, would just send your email address to our email address, which is AbundantLove at Frontier.com. Uh, we will put you on an email list. Now, this email list is only for the handouts. We will not send you flyers. We will not send you advertisements. If you request those, we'll put you on another list. But if all you want is the outline, uh, just make that known. Send your email to address to our email address. We will add you to that list and we will send these uh, periodically about every other week you'll get a copy and it is so that you can go over it and have a good idea of what's going on before we get to this in session discussion because how many know the word of the Lord is a little better when you've had some exposure to it. Amen. All right. God bless you. So and the second way that you can get a copy of the outline is that you can go to our new website. We have uh, launched a new website. Uh, the address of that website is AbundantLove-Church.org. One more time. That's AbundantLove-Church.org. And if you go to the menu and you go to the ministries menu, uh, you can actually just scroll down to the Wednesday evening Bible study. And right off to the right, you will see a hyperlink whereby you can uh, get this particular uh, handout. And we put those handouts on the website. So if you can't get it through email, you can get it through the website. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you now. Uh, this is a very, um, I think, a very powerful chapter, uh, and it is a chapter that will challenge our love life and challenge our love walk. And I want to give a, a couple of disclaimers before we get started here. Um, none of us are perfected in love. Amen. Amen. Okay, none, none of us. Uh, as long as you're in the earth realm, you will be working on your love walk. So don't let this lesson pick at you, but let it encourage you and motivate you to work in an area. Amen? Amen. Uh, it is John, I believe, that says um, that if you experience fear, you have not been perfected in love. So any place that you have fear or fright whether that be towards someone or within yourself, it just means that you still got some growing to do in the area of love. And so in this particular uh, chapter, there are some, you know, some portions that you'll be able to put a check mark by and say, okay, I'm, I'm up to that. And then there may be other portions that you need to say, okay, this is an area I need to work in. And that's all that's really required for you to give it up 
honest effort. And what you can't do on your own, the Spirit of God will do for us. Amen. The last thing that I'll say about this love is this love is not manufactured by people. We don't manufacture this love. This love is an endowment. Amen. This love comes when you receive the Spirit of God. Now, this might be kind of tight, but I'm going to say this. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you can't demonstrate this That's love. Right. Okay. Right. It, it's divine in and of itself. And, and then Paul said, uh, it's no more I, but it's the Christ that lives in me. So uh, we have to allow this love to operate uh, within us because truthfully, uh, this love can do some things that we can't do on our own. Amen. Okay, we can't love our neighbor or re and love our enemy the same without this love. Amen. Amen, somebody. I mean a serious prayer for your enemy. Not Lord bless them. What do that mean? No. Okay, no, no, you have to play, pray. <laughs> you have to pray in detail. You have to be specific. One of the things that, that I always pray when I'm praying uh, for difficult people, I pray that the Lord would open their understanding and show them the error of their ways. And many times, uh, sometimes people are in error and they don't know they're in error. And so we pray for the Lord to bring them to the light. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. I'm going to read just a little bit of this outline to you. Uh, there are two objectives in this chapter. The first objective is to see the value of love in our service for the Lord. And we said earlier that service without love uh, is moot service. And then secondly, it is to understand the scriptural definition of love. And we will find that the Bible's definition of love is much different than the world's definition of love. Amen? Amen. So in the last chapter, he's talking about these gifts and how these gifts operate. And he finishes the last chapter by saying, I'll show you a better way than just exercising gifts. Amen. 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 OK. All right. So we're going to uh, chapter number 13. Now we're going to start at verse number one. And anytime you're ready, Sister Monique. All right. Though I speak with the tongues of men mm -hmm. and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. That's Paul's way of saying, if you can speak heavenly language, language from a different sphere or different arena, uh, and you have not love, you have become as something that just makes noise. Amen. Amen. Back in the 70s, I can't remember who, I can't remember who wrote the song, but the chorus said, I think it was James Brown. He said, talking loud and saying nothing. Okay. <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you can speak with the tongues of men and angels um, and you have not loved, you have become a noisemaker. Mm -hmm. Read. And though I have the gift of prophecy. Though I have the gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries. And understand all mysteries. And all knowledge. All knowledge. And though I have all faith. All faith. So that I can remove mountains. So that I can remove mountains. And have not charity. That's I, great, that's I great faith when you can remove a mountain. And have not charity. I am. Nothing. No thing. The last chapter he talks about coveting the best gifts mm -hmm. but he's coming right here mentioning some of the same gifts that he mentioned in the last chapter he mentions prophecy he mentions faith and th that's just an abbreviated list what he's really trying to tell us is that the operation of your gift without love is not profitable amen he said, it's nothing. So, so though I have all these gifts, I have prophecy, I would love, I would love to understand every mystery in the Bible. 
and have that kind of knowledge. It would, mm -hmm. it would empower us to help so many people. But having all that knowledge and having all that understanding without the ability to love. And I want to stick a pin here because when I talk about loving other people, I'm not talking about loving people who love you. Mm -hmm. That's easy to do. Absolutely. Jesus said, what do you more than other people if you only love people who love you? He said, publicans do the same. Yes. Amen. Not, you know, we got a couple of places that's kind of like Skid Row, we go where people just hang out and got, mm -hmm. and got, you know, alcohol in the bottle. Listen, they'll pass that bottle around. They won't even wipe it off. They'll just take that's a swig and give it, it to them, and, and the next person it. takes. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because they have something in common. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get along with people that you have things in common with. The problem comes when you have misunderstandings, miscommunication. Those are, when those kind of things arise, you have to have something in your tool belt to deal with conflict. Conflict is a part of life. And you, if you don't have conflict resolution skills in the Holy Ghost, you will burn a lot of bridges that you may need to cross again. Well. So, so, so we have to love people that are not quite like us. If I got all these gifts and I don't have love, I am nothing. Now, when the Bible says nothing. you are nothing, mm -hmm. you are nothing. Absolutely. Read. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. If, if I help the poor with all of my money, if I become a, a philanthropist, if I am very charitable, if I'm helping the sick, if, I'm, if, if I am visiting the sick and putting clothes on people that need clothes, if, if, if I give all my money and bestow all my goods to feed the poor, read. And though I give my body to be burned. Oh, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says, present your body a, you know what a sacrifice is? It's a total surrender. Mm -hmm. When we think of sacrifice, we think of the Old Testament. And they had certain, they had certain um, sacrifices that they divided before they burned and took a portion. And then they had what were called whole burnt offerings, uh -huh. which means every, every bit of it went into the the sacrifice. So if I become so uh, uh, intercessory that I give my body for somebody else, and that's, although, I, I mean, this is just me. You know, sometimes you read things and, and you go, hmm, I don't know what besides love would make you burn your body for somebody yeah. else. Yeah. If it's not, if it's not love, what else would make you sacrifice yourself for somebody else? I can't think of anything. So if I give my body to be burned and I have not love, it, I, what does it do? And I have not charity. Have not love. It profits me nothing. It profits me nothing. I want to pause here again. There's that word nothing again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like that there's no profit and no benefit if there's no love. Read. Charity suffereth long. Charity, love, is long-suffering. Long-suffering just means that. It means that you suffer long. And the only way to have long-suffering is to suffer long. Mm -hmm. There's some things, sometimes people we love, sometimes people in our family uh, can take us there. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you can't draw the line and say, I've had it up to here and I'm done with, you can't do that. Love is long suffering. And the only way to get long suffering and patience is that you have to get in a very difficult situation and you have to endure. 
Ooh, I didn't get no amens just amen. then. Amen. Amen. But y'all didn't say it out loud, but I heard, <laughs> I, but I heard all of y'all amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be because, I mean, it's human nature when we get in a place of suffering to want to get out of it real quickly. But there are some things that you don't get unless you suffer. Mm. It's workout time. It's January again. <laughs> There's a slogan in the gym that says, no pain, no gain. It's true. It's true. If you go in there and just lollygag and don't get a workout in, you won't get the benefit of working hard. But it's a funny thing about muscles. Funny thing about muscles. The more you put on it, the more it's able to lift. Mm -hmm. You'll start lifting 50 pounds, and after a while, 50 pounds will feel easy. Mm. And then you got to put more weight on. And as you lift more weight, that muscle will get stronger, and it will get accustomed to the next level. That's the same way your faith is. Yes. There are certain things that God put on your faith that's designed to strengthen your faith. If you keep throwing the weight off, you're going to be a weakling. Mm -hmm. If you keep asking God to, to, to deliver me out of this, some things God not going to deliver you out of, some things God going to deliver you through. Mm -hmm. You're going to get all, I, I, I mean, yeah. you're going to get all the brunt of it. Amen. And then you're going to get out on the other side and look back and say, Woo! Mm -hmm. The Lord brought us through. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, in the book of Genesis, you will find two types of the saint. It is hinted in Methuselah's name that he prophesied the flood before it came. And what you see in Enoch and Noah is two paths of the saint. Enoch is translated before the flood. That's the rapture saint. But Noah has to build an ark, and he's not raptured away from the flood. He goes through the flood. Mm -hmm. And many times, tests and trials in our lives are just like that. Some of them God quickly delivers you out of. And then some of them you got to go through. You better know how to build an ark. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so, so we, we can have all these abilities, but if we don't have love, it's not going to profit. It's not going to benefit us. Read. And it's kind. Love is long-suffering and love, I can't hammer this enough. Love is kind. Mm -hmm. It's kind. Mm -hmm. Even angry, love is kind. kind. What yes. do you mean kind? What do you mean kind, Pastor? I mean it never turns to the place maliciously to do damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. When, when, when you really, people... Only people you love can frustrate you. Absolutely. Only people you love can get under your skin. If you don't really love a person, you don't care what they do. You don't care what they say. You don't care what go on. Mm -hmm. But when you love somebody, mm -hmm. you have a relationship with them, th those people can do that to you. Mm -hmm. But if the love is real and the love is genuine, you are always moving for a better place in reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can I be real? Let me be real. Even in church, we have offenses. Mm -hmm. I don't expect the church with no offenses. Mm -hmm. Pastor, why don't you? Because Jesus said, offenses that's must true. come. Yes, that's the word. There are going to be some disagreements. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some things we don't see eye to eye on. There are going to be some... Uh, uh, things that we, you know, we don't uh, necessarily see it the same way. And the nature of us as people, that's not out of the ordinary. That's, that's par for the course for us. Everybody can't love blue like I do. Somebody like red. Somebody like purple. 
even though blue is their best color, but it's okay for y'all to love them other colors. Amen. So, so, so offenses must come. What separates our love from people without God is the ability to reconcile. Some people in the world fall out and never have anything to do with the person ever again. Yes. But in the love of God, we are mandated by Scripture to forgive. Amen. And anytime we fail to forgive, we are out of order and out of the will of God. Amen. Amen. I, I was reading, I was reading, um, I was reading a memory, and somebody had put a post up that said, if God treated us like we treat and judge other people, mm. none of us would be standing. Amen. And somebody put a comment down that says, I know I need to forgive, but how many times? What if they keep on doing it? And I replied to him, I said, 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. And that doesn't mean 490 times. Mm -hmm. That means every time they get wrong, <laughs> ain't nobody saying nothing Amen. here. Amen. Listen, listen, without God, you can't love like that. Amen. We, we, don't, we don't have the capacity to keep loving people who keep doing us wrong. Amen. You can't do that by yourself. That has to be God. It takes God. And can I be real? Let's be real. Amen. Sometime we hit it and sometime we don't. Amen. And when we figure we missed it, ain't a thing to do but repent and try it again. Amen. Amen, somebody. All right. So, so, so we have, it's long suffering, it's kind. Real love expresses kindness. I, I wish they would start teaching courtesy in school again. Amen. One of the first things they taught us in elementary school was how to say please and thank you. How to say thank mm -hmm. you and I'm sorry. Yes. And if you master those three words at the right time, it'll take you far. If you know when to say thank you, it'll open door for more things to come. If you know how to say please, you'll get some things that you won't get any other way. Mm -hmm. And if you learn to say I'm sorry, there's nothing wrong with saying I'm sorry. It's liberating to you and liberating to the person you're talking to. When you're wrong, say I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't bring a gift. A gift is not an apology. Amen. Okay. When I'm sorry is necessary, only I'm sorry will do. Are you with me? Amen. All right, read. Charity envieth not. It doesn't envy. Envy and jealousy are branches of hatred. Mm. Envy and jealousy are the manifestation of hatred. When you envy people, when you're jealous of people, um, that's, God told Cain, he said, sin is crouching at your door. Yes. Okay, so that, those are things, now that doesn't mean you got to have the warm fuzzies about everybody, mm -hmm. but it does mean you have to treat people right. Amen. Amen. Read. Charity vaunteth not itself. It doesn't vaunt itself. It's not full of arrogance. Mm -hmm. It's not always tooting and blowing its own horn. Mm -hmm. Doesn't The hat size doesn't increase when you make an accomplishment or get acquire something. Some people, some people, oh, Lord. Some people, when they get something new, you can't talk to them. <laughs> Don't. Don't, don't let them, don't let them come in dressed and they know they looking good because um, they wear it in their swag. And I'm not against swag, but 
you also need to realize you brought nothing into this world. Amen. And it's for sure Amen. you're taking nothing, nothing out of here. Amen. 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 I don't, well, well, look what I didn't get. Look what I've gained. Look what I've acquired. Listen, listen, listen. You are one breath away from all your stuff being somebody else's. That's right. That's right. Look, look at somebody say, one breath. One breath. You are one breath away from everything you have worked a lifetime for being somebody else's. Amen. The Bible says in Luke that there was the ground of a certain rich man that brought forth plenty. He looked at his crops and knew that he had a bumper crop and knew that his barns were not big enough to hold them all. And ain't no harm in that. Ain't no harm in building bigger barns, but it's the way he said it. Mm -hmm. He said, I know what I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> he says, so, now listen, mm -hmm. number one, the soul you got is not yours. You don't have permission to talk to your soul. Yeah. yeah. It belongs to God. That's it. All souls are mine, the yes. Bible says. Yes. He go to talking to his soul like he going to live forever. <laughs> soul, you got much goods now. Mm -hmm. Take thine ease. Mm -hmm. Eat, drink, and be merry. Mm -hmm. I got enough stored up here now. I, ain't, I can retire early. I don't have to. And the Lord said, you fool. This night, your soul is required. Yes. And then who will those things be? Mm -hmm. Ever seen a U-Haul going to the graveyard? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you what happens when they bury you with all your stuff. People dig them up. Y'all know what King Touch Riches is, don't you? Yeah. All the stuff they buried with him. Now it's somebody else's. Okay. Yeah. We brought nothing into this world. We can take nothing out with us. And so, enjoy things and love people. Enjoy things, mm -hmm. but love people. Mm -hmm. Don't love things and just use people for enjoyment. Amen. That make sense? Yes. Okay, read. Is not puffed up. Not puffed up. The real love is not puffed up. Real love is not going to look down its nose at you and say, I drive a better car than you. I live in a better house than you. Real love is not going to do that. Read. Do if not behave itself unseemly. It doesn't behave. Love doesn't act strange. That's what it means. <laughs> what do you mean strange? Whatever you say strange is, that's what strange is. Okay. <laughs> love doesn't act strange. Mm -hmm. Love, love, what do you mean strange? Um, strange, strange company is people that you get in their presence and you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. okay. If you've had some dealing with them for some length of time, you get a feel for who they are as a person, and when you get next to them, you know what to expect from them. If, if, they, if they fed you cake and if they fed you uh, a pie, uh, you don't expect them to just haul off and slap you. No, please don't. No, that's, that's, that's unseen. It's not consistent. Y'all remember Sesame Street when it said one of these things is not like the other? Okay, there are things that go along with love, but there are certain things you can't put in it and make it agree with love. And I always use this example, but it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very useful example to use. Battered wife syndrome, they say, now this is what they say. They say that women believe if he doesn't hit me, he doesn't love me. That's what they say. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all not old enough to remember uh, Ignatz and Crazy Cat. Ignatz was a mouse. Crazy Cat was a... He just threw bricks at her all the time. And when he'd hit her in the head, she said, Oh, he loves me. What kind of crazy... 
That's unseemly. So, so there are certain there are certain things that there are certain things that go along with love, and there are certain things that don't go along with love. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean love is kind, which means if you see unkind behavior, that's inconsistent with love. Love is long-suffering, which means if you see people who got a short fuse, that's not consistent with love. Love is not puffed up. If you see people who are arrogant and trying to make themselves feel better by downing you, well, 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 you well. know people will do that, don't you? Yes, they do. Amen. So, so it doesn't, doesn't behave itself unseemly. Read. Seeketh not her own. It, it's not selfish. That's what that means. Love is not selfish. Now, love is going to make sure that you're taken care of as a person, but love is not going to hog everything to itself. Mm -hmm. Love is going to share. Love shares. Amen. Love shares. Amen. Love, love shares. Mm -hmm. Read. It's not easily provoked. It's not now Catch this. It didn't say it wasn't provoked. It said it's not easily, easily provoked. provoked. Okay. Um, I, I got provoked uh, yesterday. Mm. And it takes a lot to provoke me. Mm -hmm. But we, when we go to the YMCA, we play on this court. And uh, there's a Zumba class that comes in on the court at 10.30. So we can play till 10.30 with mm -hmm. no problem. Um, we know the instructor of the class, and we laugh and joke and play with her and say, hey, come on, shoot with us, and she'll shoot, and, and we'll act like we're doing some Zumba move. We don't know nothing. So we have a good <laughs> rapport with them. Yesterday, about 10.25, the class starts coming in. And not the teacher of the class, but one of the students of the class that don't even talk real good English looked at us, pointed at us, and said, get off, get up, get out of here. I, I felt heat coming out of my collar. <laughs> and I almost said something. And then I thought about it. I said, what is it going to prove? I still got to get off in five minutes. So I didn't say anything, but I did go and write a, a complaint. <laughs> and the general manager met me today and said, we, we handled it, we handled it, we got it, we got it. So, so it doesn't mean that you don't get provoked, it just means you don't get e easily provoked. Look, somebody say, not easily provoked. Not easily provoked. Read. Think of no evil. Doesn't think evil, it doesn't, it doesn't harbor thoughts of evil. That's why malice and love cannot exist in the same space. Amen. Okay. You can't love me and be planning my demise at the same time. Well, say that again. That, that can't be done. So, see, you see that kind of foolishness in politics. Yes. Because the same people that will vote for you and put you in a place, if you don't do what they say, they'll plan you. Listen, What's that guy named who was the Speaker of the House? And he was the shortest Speaker of the House ever. Oh, Kevin. Whatever his name yeah. is. That's why Because he, he made all them deals to get in there, and yeah. then he tried to go back on his deal. And the same people that put you in there? Same one that put you out. That's a lack of love. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to know, you you know who your friends are and people that love you? Go through a storm. Mm -hmm. Let the dust settle and see who's still with you. Amen. Amen. All right, read. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in truth. It rejoices in truth. We don't say, aha, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't do that. It doesn't, it doesn't celebrate somebody else's misfortune. Mm -hmm. Okay, it celebrates the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we get happy and say amen when we hear the preacher. Amen. Don't we say amen? Amen. Say that, preacher. You preaching now? <laughs> oh, oh, no, hear what they say. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Okay. All right. We rejoice in the truth. Read. 
beareth all things. It bears everything. That means it doesn't quit. Anything that is supposed to carry, it carries. It doesn't bend and release under the load. Because, can I say something to you? You cannot love people without being vulnerable. Amen. You cannot love people in a place where the person you love doesn't have the ability to injure you. Ooh, that's kind of tough right there. Ain't, ain't that kind of tough? It, but it's true. It, because if you're not vulnerable to the person, you're not open with them. Amen. Can make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, read. Believeth all things. It bears all things. It believes all things. When it says it believes all things, that means believes all true things. Yes. Okay. Okay. That don't mean that don't. That don't mean that don't mean we believe the husband every time he come home say I lost the money on the way home. No, that, that don't mean that. Okay. It, my my assistant pastor uh, talked about people that he worked with um, that would get paid on Friday, and instead of taking the money home, they would drink up the money, go to the tavern, gamble, play cards and pool, lose all the money and then come home with a story uh, about what happened to the money. And the wife knew what happened. Mm -hmm. And so they came up with a little, um, I, don't know what to, I, I don't know what to call it. Um, he said that if you had a hat, you went to the door and opened the door and threw your hat in the door. And if your hat stayed in, you could go in the house. But if your hat came back, <laughs> if your hat came back out, you couldn't go in the house. So, so uh, this does, when it says believes all things, it doesn't mean that we're gullible. Amen. Okay, it doesn't mean we believe things uh, that are not true and that don't make sense. Read. Hope is all things. It hopes in everything. This hope does not mean wish. This hope means that I've got an expectation. It, here, here's what happens when you get into a difficult place. The thing that will keep you strong in that place is keeping your hope alive. It's the expectation that this is not going to last always. Don't we sing that song? I'm so glad. Trouble, trouble don't, don't last always. Trouble don't last always. There's no trouble you get in that's going to last forever, it, except for hell. That's the, that's the, that's the trouble that will last forever. But anything on this earth is not going to last forever. So you've got to, weeping may endure for a night, a night but joy. you know what the happens? Morning. The joy comes when whatever you was crying over it's done. Okay, there's a time to cry. There's a time, there's time, time of the purpose, that time of the season, every purpose under the sun. There's a time to cry, and then there's a time to stop crying. Amen. Amen. Read. Endureth all things. It endures everything. It goes through everything. Read. Charity never faileth. It never fails. That's the thing you need to know. We're not talking about our love. We're talking about God's love. Okay, give me a few more and we can get out of here. But whether there be prophecies. Okay, here's the reason he's telling us. Now, remember just earlier in the chapter, he's talking about prophecy and faith and gifts. Now, he stops right in the middle and tells us that your gift without love mm -hmm. is no good. Mm -hmm. Now he's getting ready to tell you that the gifts you have are not going to last forever. Amen. Okay, there's a time, there's a time to operate them gifts, and then there's a time they're going to cease. That's why the Bible says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth while the evil days come not. The evil day there represents a time when something you could do, you can't do anymore. Okay. When you would run, when you were young, you could run all day and not get tired. Try that now. <laughs> okay. And there's coming a day when your running is over. Okay. Amen. So, 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 so these gifts that we operate have a season. You better sing while you can. Mm -hmm. You better dance while. I, I, I haven't missed no dance. When I could dance, I dance. I just hop now. Mm -hmm. but, but when I could dance, I danced. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means make use of what you have because what you have is not forever. Listen, that little pop bottle figure, that don't last forever. 
Them, them Popeye muscles, I don't care how much you lift weight, they not lasting forever. Amen. Amen. You sit down and just jump up out of a chair, that ain't going to last forever. You're going to grab them arms and, put, and push your way out of that chair. Amen. It's, it's funny to me now. I, I, I'm the, I, don't, I don't really want another car, but I want something that sit higher because it's just, it's, it's kind of tough for me to get out the car now. Hey Amen. Time to get in. I got to turn around and back into the, back into the car. Amen. So, so, so what he's getting ready to tell you now is that all those gifts that you have and all those abilities that you have, they are not going to last forever. Read. They shall fail. They're going to fail. Whether there be tongues. Prophecy going to fail. Tongues going to fail. Read. They shall cease. They shall cease. Whether there be knowledge. Whether there be knowledge. It shall vanish away. It's going to vanish away. Read. For we know in part. Here and, it is. And we prophesy in we part. We know in part and now. Now, even in this, he's instructing us about prophecy. Let me tell you something about prophetic utterance and never forget what I'm getting ready to tell you. Because the evangelical church and the Pentecostal church is mired in prophetic word, but not according to the scripture. Stop looking for people to come to town, call you come out, and read your life in yes. No, no, sir. The Bible said nobody knows everything about you. God wouldn't tell anybody everything about you. Amen, somebody. Amen. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part, which is why when people, and I've had people in our ministry say, well, you don't use my gift because I'm a prophet. I'm a prophetess. And you don't use my gift. Well, sorry, we can't use your <laughs> gift until a couple more prophets show up. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. Because if there's prophetic utterance for the church, the Bible says, let it be by two or three by course. Yes. That means if, if prophecy goes to the church, there got to be two or three people in that prophecy. And if you're the only prophet, you ain't prophesying here. Well. Y'all <laughs> looking at me funny. But people get messed up like that. Amen. And I'm not against prophecy. But sometimes what we are calling prophecy is not prophecy. Amen. It's discernment. Amen. People can discern something and speak something that they have discerned through the spirit in your life. But prophetic always has to do with future occurrence. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Read. Okay, a couple but, more. Come but on. when that which is perfect is come. When that which is perfect is come. Then you know that what's perfect? which is part shall be done. Away. That which is perfect is God's love. Mm -hmm. When God's love comes in completeness and perfection, that which is in part is done away with. Read. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Isn't it very peculiar that these verses are put in the Bible right behind love? Mm -hmm. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. He's talking about all these gifts and talking about what love does. And then out of the blue, he says, when I was a child. Mm -hmm. What he's doing, he's getting ready to draw a comparison. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to show you how love is supposed to develop in your life just like growing does you know what we call people who stop growing we call them runts mm -hmm. dwarfs okay okay you are not supposed to stop growing in your Christian faith and in your Christian love mm -hmm. there may be some things that you can't handle right now but that's not a life sentence Amen. You got to get to the place where you got, well, you know, I, that's just the way I am. That might be just the way you are right now, but well, you can't stay like that. Amen. You amen. have to grow. You have to mature. I'm going to get in a little trouble here, but I'm going to say this. About every problem in church can be traced to immaturity. Amen. Every, every sore that won't heal in a church 
is because somebody should do something and won't do what they're supposed to do. Amen. Even if you have a falling out, the Bible says forgive. That's supposed to fix it. That's it. And when something keeps going on and on and on and cycling and cycling and repeating and repeating, somebody is stuck in immaturity. Amen. Are y'all ready for this? All right, read. When I was a child. I spake as a child. I talked like a child. Goo goo ga ga. Goo goo ga ga. <laughs> goo goo ga ga. We don't mind little, little children saying that. But what if a 40-year-old man come say, goo goo ga ga. We look at him like he crazy. Absolutely. When I was a child, I spake like a child. Read. I understood as a child. The reason I spoke like a child is because I understood like a child. A child sees things through a different lens than an adult does. Are you with me? Amen. Read. I thought as a child. I thought like a child because the reason I spoke like a child is because I thought like a child and I understood like a child. And the reason I understood like a child because I thought like a child. Because as a man thinketh, so, so is, he. is he. So the way you think is the way you are. If you want to change who you are, you got to change the way you think. Amen. Read. But when I became a man. Now, that man right there is not gender. It means adult. When I became an adult, I put away childish ways of speaking, understanding, and thinking. My last statement, and th that's the end of that chapter, ain't it? No, it's two more verses. Okay, all right. So l l g catch this. <clears throat> you will run into problem if you experience things in a place of immaturity and you grow up and you still consider like a child what you went through as an adult. Oh, Lord. Help us. You can, you can get stuck in a place. Yes. You, you, can get a stuck, you can get stuck in a stage of development. So if you're going to change who you are, you've got to change the way you think, and you have to start looking at it from an adult perspective. I hesitate to go here, but I'm going to go here anyway. Because we live in life where sometimes adults don't protect children and children get abused. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens more than we talk about. Amen, somebody. Amen. And many times the child is left believing it was their fault. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way children think. Yeah. They think it's their fault. Mm -hmm. And if nobody ever tells them it wasn't their fault, yes. they'll go into adulthood believing that what happened to them was their fault. Yes. So even though you may have experienced some things as a child, you have to get to the place where you change the thinking and the understanding of it and you should never punish yourself for something that wasn't your fault. Amen. I tell them somebody dropped the ball. Somebody who should have protected you didn't protect you. But you weren't carrying the ball, so how could you drop it? Amen. Amen. All right, read. I put away childish things. I put away childish things when I became now, a man, when I, when I became an adult. Read. Mm -hmm. For now we see through a glass darkly now in this realm even though the lord is dealing with us we don't see everything clearly mm -hmm. okay we look through a dark glass so there's certain th certain things that happen in your life and you'll be asking god why did this happen what's going on here and we expect god to give us an answer are you ready and sometimes god doesn't give us an answer mm -hmm. deuteronomy 29 and 29 this says the things that are revealed belong to us, but the hidden things belong to God. Sometimes God hides some things from you, and he won't tell you why it happened. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you to grow from it. Now we see through a dark glass. But then face to face. But then later on we're going to see face to face. Read. Now I know in part. I know in part right now while I'm in this body and this flesh. 
but then shall I know even as also I, I am I love known. this verse because this verse gives us a peek into heaven. What is it that God doesn't know about us? Mm -hmm. He knows everything about us. And this verse says that we shall know even as we are known. known. Yes. And so many of the things that we don't know and understand now when we get to heaven, we're going to understand them. Amen. Amen. Right, at the end of that chapter? One more verse. One more verse. All right, give me one more. And now abided faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should have <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> knew that verse. <laughs> yeah. I should have knew that wasn't the end. Uh, yeah. Okay. And now. Abideth faith. Abideth. Now, these three abide. Faith. Hope. Hope. Charity. And charity. Faith, hope, and charity. Watch this now. Watch the, this. These three. Wait, wait. Because mm -hmm. we'll think that faith is the greatest. Yes. Now, these three, these, these three virtues abide together. Faith, which is trust and belief in what God said. Mm -hmm. Hope, expectation to receive what God said. Mm -hmm. And love or charity. But the greatest of the three. But the greatest of these is on. charity. The greatest one is charity. Now, what are you saying, Pastor? You, should you have faith? Yes, you should. But faith is, going, faith is going to hinge on your ability to understand the word of God and receive it. Your expectation does the same thing. Because you can't stand on a promise that you don't know what it is. Amen. Amen. I always say that the Bible is like a jigsaw puzzle. Every verse has a piece of the picture that you need to see, but some people don't have a full puzzle. Amen. Amen. But charity or love is the greatest. Amen? Yeah. All right, clap your hands right there. Thank you for your patience. We got all the way through tonight. Amen. Are there any questions tonight? Yes. If you could please, I know we're to love, but can you kind of go over... Like if someone is dealing with abuse, but they're getting, a, can you kind of just kind of cover that? Because sometimes the enemy will pull people back um, and manipulate them saying, if you love me, then you will be with me. Oh. So I want to make, I want to just make it clear that abuse right. should never be tolerated. Right. Um. L let me define abuse. Abuse is abnormal use. It's when you use something not in the way it is purposed to be used. Okay. Particularly in relationships, relationships are designed to enrich both parties. Okay. Any relationship that doesn't enrich both parties is abusive in this sense that somebody's being used. The Bible says two are better than one because they both get a better reward for their working together. So having said that, um, now these things say I, not the Lord. Paul said it, and so I said this. The Bible talks about, particularly in marriage, that you should work to reconcile. But sometimes there are conditions in the marriage that will not allow people to reconcile. Okay? One is infidelity. And when it talks about fornication, it talks about not a one-time occurrence. It talks about repeated unfaithfulness. And you really shouldn't stay in something like that because there are so many diseases going around. You can, be, you can be exposed to anything. Okay, So that's scriptural. The scripture does not particularly say this one, but I believe this one is implied. I believe when there is physical abuse in a relationship, it is one that you should move away from. Okay, There are people in the name of trying to stay together have stayed with people who are enraged and become physical when they get angry, and people have lost their lives trying to do the right thing. So if there's ever physical abuse, and I'll even go a little farther than that, 
Some, some emotional abuse. Some verbal abuse. Are y'all ready for this? Some financial abuse. People hogging the money and, and controlling you with the purse string. That kind of abuse, it is inconsistent with the definition of love that chapter number 13 gives. Now, are y'all ready for this? Y'all ain't ready for this. Which is why you got to do your homework before you marry. That's, that's, that's when your homework, you got to do your homework before you come up the aisle because, and you got to really do some, do some, I'm a, I'm a two-time divorcee. I never thought I would be divorced, but sometimes people can appear one way in the early stages, and then once they get you, they can turn into somebody else. Amen. So you got to do, you got to do your homework up front and don't ignore red flags. If they get mad at you before you marry, it doubles after marriage. That's the way it works. In, in the dating stage, I'm done. In the dating stage, <laughs> in the dating stage, they're trying to put their best foot forward. Okay, they looking good and smelling good and saying all the right things, but there's a there's a there is a relaxing that takes place after they got you. Amen. And when they was opening doors before you married, and now now you got to open your own door. <laughs> my past my pastor said my pastor said. Uh, said before say he was talking about a man said before he married her oh come on let me come on to the car let me open the door and let you in and then after he married said you better come on here woman I'll leave you <laughs> so so people people and 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 now and and if the truth be told not just the person you talking about you relax too there's some things that you going to do before that you're not going to do afterwards. So uh, the dating stage is really, it's a chess match to decide what you can put up with. You're going to put up with something. You just have to make sure that what you have to put up with is something you can put up with. And in the dating stage, if you stay alert, they'll show you signs in the dating stage. I'm telling you what I know. They'll, they'll show you signs, red flags. If you pay attention, red flags will come up. And any time a red flag comes up, don't ignore it. Okay, snoop around in it. Look, look and see what's really at the heart of it because afterwards uh, you, can, you can have a surprise. And you don't want to be surprised, amen? Okay, did I, did I help there? I hope I did. Yes, you did. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, let's get our offering this evening so we, can, so we can go home. Amen. I desire your prayers. I got a plane to catch in the morning. Amen. And my, um, my cousin was like a sister to me. She actually lived with us for a while and uh, went to high school here with us. And she's such a... Um, she loved to sing. She loved the Lord. She loved church. And I had hopes that she was going to get better. Amen. That was, that was, it was unexpected. When she was unconscious and unresponsive, uh, I told the Lord, I said, if you're going to take her, I said, take her. If not, heal her. And so when she woke up and got up and went home, I just expected her to keep getting better. And then we got a call Christmas Eve and my heart hurts a little bit. All right, prepare yourself to give. Let's give. Let's give tonight. Let's give. Let's be a blessing. If you need an envelope, Sister Natasha's coming, passing envelopes. Amen. Did, did we mention whose birthday it was today? We didn't? Oh, my goodness. Oh. 
is it, are we close to it? When is, when, Corey, when your birthday? Today, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I thought, I thought our drummer, Corey Weber's birthday is today. Yes, yes, and amen. And we want to go on public record saying how much of an asset Corey is to our church. Amen. We love him. Amen. We're certainly saying happy birthday. All right. It also, if you have your debit card or your, your credit card, uh, Sister Natasha has the card slider for you this evening. And if you give her a little signal, she'll give that. Come to your location. And last but not least, we're going to use our mobile phone to give. We use two applications. The first one we use is GiveLify, <clears throat> which is a church application. And we can be found as the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then the second one we use is Cash App. And our Cash App hashtag address is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. Amen? All right, everybody ready to give? Okay, take whatever you have, your envelope, your card, or your phone, and let's hold it up. And let's pray God's blessing on it. Uh, Father, we thank you uh, for your word this evening, and you thank, we thank you for the love challenge that challenges us uh, to go deeper and mature in our love. Help us in every place where we're lacking and cause us to be more like you. Uh, you said, greater love have no man than this, that he give his life for his friend. One of the ways that we show we love you is that we give. And so I want you to bless every giver this evening, those that are in the sanctuary and those uh, that are watching by stream that are contributing. I pray, Lord, that you would just fulfill your word to them, take what they give, multiply it, and return it to them according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, the Lord's people said, thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. All right. Everybody is giving. All right. Our consecration is going to start Monday the 8th. We're going to do 21 days. It will go from the 8th to the 28th. The 28th is Sunday. It ends on the last Sunday in January. And we will serve communion not this Sunday. We will serve communion the last Sunday. Amen? All right, yes. That's good. Amen. That's good. I like that. Okay. So they'll get that Zoom information for you. Uh, we'll not only send it out by email, we'll put it somewhere on the website so anybody who wants to participate in the prayer can. How many know it's praying time? Amen. You better believe it. Do you all see that that war is spreading now around Israel? Okay. They're lobbing. They're lobbing. Uh, missiles into other countries now, countries that we against and countries that we have an alliance with, if we're not real careful, we can be in a world war overnight. So we should be praying now. Amen? Okay, if, if a bomb falls in Fort Wayne, where are you running? Running to the building is all right, but a bomb will bring this building down too. You better, you better know the Lord. Amen. Okay, all right, all right. Everybody have a chance to give? All right, may we all stand. Yes. Can you pray for me tonight? Absolutely. I, I don't have a problem. I'll tell you what, let's finish the stream, and then uh, I, I absolutely, um, I, I don't mind prayer. I don't mind prayer at all. Amen. I'm trying to hold it together. But I, I kind of dread going. <laughs> yeah.
It's a, and I'm not complaining because I'm not a complainer. I try my best not to complain.